You hear that music? He plays that music whenever he's out on patrol. <laughs> We're on patrol now with CHP officer Johnny Fisher. Sands the aviator sunglasses, <laughs> right? Yeah, officer Fisher joins us now to discuss the recent passing of two state laws, Assembly Bill 53 and Assembly Bill 8. Good morning, Officer Fisher. What's going on, fellas? Uh, all these new bills, apparently. So yeah. uh, let's start with uh, Assembly Bill 53. Mm -hmm. uh, what's this one about? Okay, so uh, it used to be uh, you have to keep your child rear facing until they're one year old or, or 20 pounds. Well, uh, we're, uh, we found that it's, it's, it's always safer to keep your kids rear facing as long as possible. And that's the recommendation that we make when we're installing car seats. Um, and you've heard us talk about car seats on here once or twice. Um, now, um, it, the, if the child's under two years old, they have, they have to stay rear facing. Um, so until they turn two, that's when you can turn around. Unless the child is over 40 pounds, or the child is more than 40 inches. So as you see on the screen right there, uh, the child is under the age of two, the child is under 40 pounds, or the child is uh, less than 40 inches, um, have to be rear facing. Um, you know, this is gonna cause maybe, I don't wanna say a headache, but you know, it, it draws concern for parents because car seats cost money, right. you know what I mean? And so it's like, oh no, now I have to go get something else. Um, but. The good news is this law doesn't take into effect until 2017, uh, January 1st. We have some time. Yeah, so you have a little bit of time, um, but honestly, it is safer to keep your kiddos rear facing as long as possible. Precious cargo on board. We want to keep them as safe as possible. So, just so if, if somebody hasn't heard you talk about this before, explain again why is rear facing so much safer? Well, the more uh, a lot of the collisions that 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 occur are you know, that have are rear enders, mm -hmm. you know, so it's either the front or the back. And most vehicles are designed to withstand the front and rear impacts of traffic collisions. Um, and when the car seats are set up, uh, they're set up to absorb all the energy. So, you know, when, you're, when, when we're front facing, we're gonna naturally go forward, right. okay? So that car seat that's rear facing is just gonna absorb all the energy from that crash and it's like a little safety pod for the kiddos. Ah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of people had, had some questions about that. It didn't make sense to them. Right. That makes sense. Okay, uh, we do have another bill uh, right. that we're talking about here. This is Assembly Bill 8. Uh, and this one actually just passed this past mm -hmm. Monday, right? Yep. Uh, what is this one about? Okay, this is a really good one. Uh, much like the other one. I like, I like both of these laws, actually. Um, okay, so this is for hit and run uh, awareness. Um, so if you're involved in a hit and run that involves serious injury or, or fatal injuries, um, and you know there there is criteria that we'll discuss here, and there they are. So it's called a yellow alert. So if you're in a hit and run collision, a person has suffered a fatal or serious injury, the suspect has fled the scene, um, they're on a state highway, they've been reported as to be on a state highway, um, you have a, a complete or partial license plate, uh, description of the vehicle, so make, model, color, uh, anything uh, that's unique. Uh, about the vehicle that you can report. Um, all these criteria, uh, you know, give us some stuff so that we can put it on the, the big CMS boards that are on the freeway. Now, this is not gonna be like with an Amber Alert. Um, it goes on, Amber Alerts go on the emergency alert system. Right. These type of, uh, this type of uh, yellow alert is not gonna go on the emergency alert system, okay? So you're only gonna see this on the freeway. Okay. right now what do you do if when this goes into effect and you see that on a freeway mm -hmm. and you think you've seen the car what should they do then call 911 you know um the be a, be a good witness is the best thing you know you're you're actually helping somebody out and you know when it comes to these hit and runs i mean i brought i brought some statistics with me uh from 2013 and some partial from 14 and 15 but just here in fresno county um, 384 injury collisions were hit and run, and 20 were fatal collisions. Wow. wow. And out of that, 24 people had passed away, and over 500 were injured. And I know that those are only numbers, and, we, and you know, when we talk about statistics, the first thing you think of is a number, yeah. but those are all somebody, someone. You know right. what I mean? Those are, instead of a birthday party, it's something negative. So we want to limit that, or we want to 
apprehend uh, the people that are fleeing from these things. So these are these are some pretty good laws I feel like that are coming out, and that takes an effect uh, January first, twenty sixteen. Uh, that one's sooner than the other one. Yeah. Officer Johnny Fisher, thank you so much for being it's here a pleasure as being here. always. All right, guys. And if you'd like a recap of these two new laws, a little more clarity, if you like, uh, you can watch this segment again and past on patrol segments. You can find a link to the CHP's website as well by going to kmph.com and just click the On Patrol tab from the Great Day drop-down menu.